Hey folks, Dave Anderson here. Hey, I have a challenge for you. And let's just say that, okay, the power has now gone out and now I have to cook a meal. So please cook a meal off the grid this week. So make a cool meal, make it delicious, make it fun, get yourself outdoors and do something that is pretty cool for scouting. Well, hey guys. Hey, this is in response to that uh, cooking challenge. This is supposed to be something that challenges you. And what challenges you may not challenge me and what challenges me may not challenge you. It is whatever level that you believe is going to stretch you a little bit. Because, you know, when, when we're stretched, just like when we're stretching muscles and stretching, stretching out, that we actually expand our capability. We make that muscle stronger. And that is really what this is all about. So it's not about who does the absolute best. It is about who does the absolute best compared to their skill level and what stretches them. Today, what stretches me? Well, what stretches me is a bow drill fire. I, it's been years since I did a bow drill fire and that is really gonna stretch me today. I, bow drill fire coming up next. Stay tuned. You guys might be wondering why I have this table set up. It's just basically so that I can show you what exactly that I'm doing. The biggest problem that people face when they're building a fire is they fail to prep. And hey, Boy Scout, Boy Scout uh, motto is be prepared, right? So you need to, you need to be prepared so that when you get your fire starting, you can actually uh, not just start it, but then build upon it so that it becomes a, a larger fire that you can actually cook by it. So this is what's going to be my prep. Clearly, I am out of practice. Thankfully, angry birds to the rescue. Now I could do this the easy way, but really, what kind of challenge would that be? I mean, this is, this is pretty simple. Look at there, I already got a fire. But that's just too easy. Come on, challenge yourself. Hold on, hold on. What was that? Oh, who carries around an 8x10 Fresnel lens in their backpack? All right, fine. I see how you are. I carry around this in my wallet. Once again, too easy. Hmm. All right, takes a little bit longer, but you know what? I'm gonna have a fire. All right, I think I'm ready to at least start making the bird's nest. And I am going to start with this uh, old kind of semi, it's dry. You can tell there's dry. I don't feel any cold. But uh, this is just old nasty rope, it's weak. So I'm gonna start with a chunk of rope. And I'm gonna unwind this. All right, so I have my bird's nest. I have my handle. And this is cedar bark. And I am going to try to 
tear it up and get it just as fine as I possibly can. And it's these, it's this fiber inside the cedar bark that uh, will actually take a spark and go straight into flame. But what I want it to do is take an ember and be able to blow that right into a flame instead. So I'm gonna do it just a slightly different way. It's a little bit harder, but it, once again, challenging yourself and uh, prep work is really, really important. All right, I am going to use this rim stove that I made with this uh, cook topper. Also made this, I'll leave links in the description. So I also want to prep the area once I have my, my tinder ball uh, going and lit, I also want to have somewhere where I can put it. Now I could have a fire, you know, basically right down here at the bottom, build it up and then pick it up and put it in. But I'm gonna go for the straight in method. So I wanna have this thing ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to take these little bit bigger pieces and I'm gonna make a partial log cabin. So I've just laid two in and then I'm just gonna lay them basically like this. You don't wanna put them together like this because oxygen won't flow. You need to put them so that you have maximum air circulation all around it. Now what's gonna be nearest to the fire, I wanna have this really, really small, this is what I whittled out of uh, some dry alder, it was, I believe it was. And for good measure, I'm just gonna unwind some of this sisal. This is a baling twine that uh, I made rope out of. The rope has since um, been used <laughs> for multiple, multiple things. You know, this rope isn't gonna last forever. But once again, prepping where you're gonna have your fire is the most important thing. A lot of people just want to go straight to fire because that's the cool part and then they often fail all right so that's what it looks like inside here's a pro tip for you after the wind blows go out into the trees and harvest all of this uh, moss and you can dry it out which they'll, all of this stuff is bone dry some parts of the country you can actually find pitch and that's what this is as i've harvested a bunch of pitch put it into a bag i mean look at that there's there's probably a good 12 ounces right here and this pitch will burn like it'll burn like gasoline there's your pro tip now that everything is ready to accept the ember that I'm about ready to create, which is the hardest part, I think I'm ready to start making that ember. So let's get my bow and drill set ready. I think I'm gonna use this to catch my ember. All right, I found some 550 cord. And here's something else that I found. Hey, I'm not out in the wilderness, this is urban. So I found this, what an awesome bow. I think I've got it burned in pretty good. Let's try to make an ember.
fight. <sighs> Gonna take a little more than that. I need to rest for a second though. <sighs> All right, rest break's over. Oh, come on. I think this 550 cord is too slick. I'm gonna go with some bank line. This is a tough challenge. Very tough challenge. Yeah, I'm into this over an hour. I'm starting to get kind of tired. This is a, a time where it's very easy to get frustrated and quit but you can't do that. You have to keep, keep going. You have to keep going. You want to fire, you want to eat, you have to keep going. Oh, don't need to do that. You see, I'm getting tired. I think there's a number in it. <sighs> oh, I think I got one. try this one more time and I thought I had it that last time had a good bunch but it just wasn't didn't seem like it was lit oh, oh hold on hold on it was lit it was lit Hey. Yeah, it's gonna go. Got it, got it. <laughs> yes, finally I can eat. Ah, oh, yes. Look at that glorious. Oh, oh, good. Oh, beautiful. Dang, that's a lot of work. Did it. Can't believe it. Thank God, finally, two hours. Man, I tell you what, I am so out of practice. Uh, my knees are weak. <laughs> my arms are aching. Two hours to get that going. But that's what happens when you get out of practice on something. You, you, it just takes a long time to get back into it. Just don't give up. Don't give up. All right, guys. So what I'm going to make is a survival food that has been used for centuries. It has been used for uh, in pioneering days. The Indians used it. Uh, it is a fabulous, fabulous fuel that is very, very lightweight and, and comes in a very, very small package. And what I'm talking about is parched corn. So this isn't something that you can just grab off the grocery shelf. No, this is something that you have to think way, way ahead. Like, oh, last summer when the, the corn is harvested and some of the corn, although Maybe you can't eat all of it. Um, you would dry it out and then and then husk it, take all of the corn, corn kernels off, 
And this is really what is in a bag of corn nuts. This is gonna be delicious and nutritious. Some olive oil. I'm gonna make me an extra helping. A little bit extra for some flavor. Yep, I'm thinking that is done. Put a little dash of salt on it with my awesome salt shaker. Remember what it looked like before? And after. Now I finally get to enjoy the fruits of my labor. And I finally get to eat. Still a little hot. Crunchy and delicious. It tastes just like buttery, salty popcorn. A little bit of salt, not too much. Now this is enough for at least two meals, if not three meals. And this is what the pioneers and Indians subsided on when they had to go on journeys and couldn't, uh, couldn't sit down and cook a meal three times. They had to take it with them and they just munched on the road. All right, time to check out what else I made. Awesome fried chicken! <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. I hope that your challenge turns out well. Until next time, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless.